Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for to make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. I completely and utterly broke down. Photographs illustrate how a mother spent 16 days with her body of her deceased newborn child and even carried her unfortunate daughter for strolls with her in the stroller. In her own words, Charlotte revealed that the traumatizing experience had left her feeling empty. A mom has posted heartbreaking images of the 16 days she spent with her newborn after her mother passed away, which she's published on Facebook. When doctors discovered that Charlotte Sackis, age 21, and her husband, Attila, 28, had a baby girl with an imbalanced chromosomal translocation at her 20-week scan, they were compelled to break the dreadful news to them. Parents during their grieving process, Attila and Charlotte Sizax were able to spend quality time with their late daughter. Unfortunately, when Evelyn was born in December 2016, she was born with an underdeveloped brain, tiny airways in her nose and lungs, and a narrow aorta which is the main artery that leads from the heart, all of which contributed to her premature birth. Because of the tot's obstructed airways, she was unable to breathe on her own and thus could not undergo the heart surgery that would have saved her life. She was in her parents' arms when she died away on January 10th at Martin House Hospice in Weatherby, West Yorkshire, despite the fact that she'd fought against the odds for about four weeks prior. As Charlotte described the painful experience, she said the decision to transport their daughter to the hospice was the toughest decision you could ever make as parents. In her own words, she remarked, When we found out after the 20-week ultrasound, Attila and I were in great shock. It was at this point that I believe we were more emotional than when she was taken away from us because we had no idea what was going on. Evelyn was brought into the hospice on January 10th, and I've never seen her so quiet in my life. I'm grateful. For the first time in hours, we were able to hold her and cuddle her properly for about an hour before the ventilator was switched off. She went away barely a couple minutes after they removed her breathing tube, the doctor said. She couldn't take a single breath since she was so exhausted. I was holding her in my arms as she walked away, and her father was wrapping his arms around both of us. What is a cuddle cot and how does it work? When a baby dies in the hospital, it's common for their body to be moved to the hospital morgue as is the norm with all deaths in a medical setting. Some families may choose to bring their infant to a hospice where they can spend quality time with their kid while receiving assistance from the staff. Many hospices, such as the Martin House Hospice, where infant Evelyn was sent, provide this option to families in need. They have specially designed cooled chambers as well as cuddle cots with chilly beds for the little ones. It's recommended that cuddle cots be used by charities bereavement practitioners, and academics in the United Kingdom because they allow parents to spend more time with their babies before the funeral. It provides mourning family members with time to cope with their loss while also keeping their bodies of the babies from degrading further. Hear from Sherilyn McMahon, a stillbirth and newborn loss charity representative. She believes that cuddle cots aid in the grieving process in the long run. Families are invited to spend as much time as they like with their babies at the center. From there, it's up to the parents to decide where the body of their kid will be moved. A cuddle cot was used to keep Evelyn cool while Charlotte and Attila stayed at the hospice for 12 days to help them through the terrible grief process. This allowed the first-time parents to spend quality time with their late baby, as well as taking her for walks with the rest of the family. The bereaved couple were even permitted to take Evelyn home for four days prior to her funeral on January 26th, which took place on the same day. We stayed at the hospice for 12 days and would take Evelyn out for her cuddling cot for 5 to 10 minutes at a time for cuddles or to go for walks around the garden with her, her mother Charlotte shared with the press. For the next four days, we were permitted to take Evelyn and her cuddling cot home with us. In our room on our last night, she slept in her actual crib, which we had purchased specifically for her. Despite the fact that Charlotte was able to spend some quality time with her child, she confesses that she never truly felt like a mother. It was incredibly terrible not being able to hold her for such a long period of time, and even when we were able to hold her, the nurses had to lift her up and set her on us, so you don't really feel like you're being a parent, she explained. I've never had a strong sense of being a mother. I'm having flashbacks to when I was pregnant, 
and I had everything ready for Evelyn. But I'm not pregnant at all right now. It's difficult to express. It doesn't feel real. I'm just empty. I don't know what to say. I'm just empty. Charlotte continued, The funeral was extremely painful since it was at that point that reality truly began to set in. In spite of the fact that we're in so much anguish right now, knowing that Evelyn is in a better place brings us some solace. I would give anything to have her here, and I would give anything to have that opportunity, but we have no way of knowing what her life would have been like. At the very least, she's no longer in pain. It was Charlotte's decision to release the devastating photographs in order to raise awareness among other parents. So many people have never heard of parents being able to spend that much time with their kids, and other moms have reached out to me saying they believe it would have been beneficial, so I really want to spread awareness. I understand that it may not be the greatest solution for everyone, but for us, it was critical to be able to spend quality time together as a family and to properly hold our young daughter. I believe that spending time with her made a significant effect. Being able to do so many of the things you imagine, such as taking her for a stroll in her pram, was extremely therapeutic on an emotional level. I was apprehensive about taking her home because I wasn't sure if it would feel right, but it was wonderful to have her there, and it wasn't just for us, it was also for Evelyn, who was able to return home. Dr. Clea Harmer, chief executive of the stillbirth and neonatal death charity SANS, expressed her sorrow over the death of baby Evelyn, saying, We were deeply saddened to learn of her death and extend our condolences to the parents. A chilly cot allowed Evelyn's parents to spend additional time with their daughter after she died, and other parents have told us that spending time with their newborns at home or in the hospital can help them through the grief process. If you've been impacted by the death of a baby, I strongly encourage you to contact this organization. The National Health Service, or NHS, explains what unbalanced chromosome translocation is. A translocation is a rearrangement of chromosomes that occur in the human body. When cells divide during the production of an egg, sperm, or the early development of a fetus, one or more portions of the chromosomes can break off and then rejoin in a different location, sometimes swapping places with another chromosome, which is a condition known as chromosomal instability. In a balanced translocation, the chromosome material is rearranged, but no material is lost or gained, and as a result, the health of the person who bears the translocation is normally unaffected. An unbalanced translocation, on the other hand, is a rearrangement of the chromosomes in which there is an excess piece of one chromosome and or a missing piece of another chromosome that can be inherited by a child of a balanced translocation parent. An imbalance in chromosomal material, whether too little or too much, can result in health problems or impairment. When a translocation is not balanced, it might lead to major developmental difficulties in the baby who bears the mutation. The severity of the issues that a newborn experiences will be determined on the precise chromosomal translocation that's occurred. Despite the fact that around one in every 500 persons has some sort of translocation, it's not completely understood why they occur. When a baby dies, most hospitals give compassionate grief care to the bereaved parents, according to Erica Stewart, bereavement support and awareness specialist at SANS. This includes being presented with a variety of options for what happens to their infant, such as the option of capturing hand and footprints, photographs, and bringing their baby home or out of the hospital. In the absence of a legal justification, parents are free to take their child home to say farewell before the funeral, which for many parents is the most natural thing to do. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.